morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Heavenly Host. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Spirit of truth. I so love being with you all. And I'm excited about today. It's a good day to be alive. He woke us up this morning. And I know I say that every day, but I'm grateful. And I know some of you are too. Not everybody's happy to be alive because they believe that the things that they're facing is a detriment to them, but it's not. Look at it as class. You're in school. You're learning how to ask God to come in and help you with your situation that you're facing. And when you come through it, then you'll know this is how he operates. If you do it his way. If you keep trying to do it your way, it'll be hard for you. I've said that before. Good morning, everybody. I want to tell you I love you and God loves you. Right out the gate, he loves you. That's why he woke you up this morning. To show you and prove to you that he is God and that he really loves you. Of course, I have a song on my heart today. I always do. My Jesus... Your name above all names, beautiful Savior, glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, blessed Redeemer, living Word, living word oh my jesus my jesus your name above all names beautiful savior glorious lord emmanuel god is with us Beautiful Savior, Jesus is mine, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we thank you for being so good to us. We thank you for this day. This is another day that you have made, a day that we've never experienced before. But it's a day that you know what we should do in it, how we should respond to it, and how we should move forward in it. So, Father, we thank you for, for all, all of your goodness, all of your power, all of your might, all of your strength. Everything about you, you've given to us today so that we can be victorious. I just encourage you, pause, and let's hang out with him. I want to share with you, you know, yesterday when we um, talked about uh, Psalms 51 and when David um, had sinned with Bathsheba and, and Psalms 51 is right after that encounter that David had had with Nathan the prophet. And God reminded me of something. He said, I only chasten those I love. Chastening means correct. If you're not being corrected by God in your time with him in the word, even yesterday when I finished with you all and I continued to spend time with God, he took me into a scripture and it really blew me away. And he talked to me about my mouth. You see, I remember I told you all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. We're all being corrected. We're all being strengthened. We're all being made to be in his image and in his likeness. And so there are things in our own nature that still come up. And so sometimes I have a tendency to talk too much and say things that are none of my business outside of here. You know, I have a life and so I have family and sometimes something will come up and I'll make comment. But God reminded me, that's none of your business. And he corrected me. And he corrected me right in Psalms 50. I'll read to you. It's the part. It's the last part of it. Um, but whenever you spend time with him and you go in the word, 
He's not going to always, he always loves us. But he's not, it's not going to feel like it, you know. Sometimes he'll correct us. And I, I realize in mentoring people, people don't like being corrected. Really? <laughs> That's impossible. If we were perfect and mature, then we would not need correction. And God's word is full of love, compassion, correction, healing, direction. Oh my God, strength. He is everything. But one thing he is, he's a good father. And so yesterday, um, after I finished my time with you all, just pausing for a moment, he said, I want you to read Psalms 50. And it's beautiful. It was strength, talking about him, everything that he is, even things that I had mentioned. He reminded me, yes, you're on the right path. But this is one thing he said. At the end of Psalms 50, it says, now consider this, you that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. This is verse 22. And now I'm going to 23. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. It was a reminder. It was a gentle pat. You ever been popped on your hand, or do you ever catch yourself and pop yourself because you know, oh my God, I shouldn't have said that, done that. He says, he that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. His saving power. I need him too much. <clears throat> I need him too much that I would not order my conversation aright. So he put me in check yesterday. So I wanted to read the scripture in Hebrews where he corrects us where he tells us why and what comes out of being corrected. I'm going to read it, if time permits, in the King James verse, and then I'm going to read it in the message. And I, I have to go the way that God is leading me in our time together. I love you all so much, and God loves you so much, and he does not want you to fall. He does not want you to fail. But also know this, that we don't do everything right. Whenever we think that there is no fault or nothing wrong in us, then we're deceived. And we have to stay in the word. Do you know that the more you stay in the word, when you do stray, God knows how to get you back. But the path back to him is repentance. It means get right with God. Tell him what's going on with you and tell him the truth. Now, don't lie to him like sometimes we'll lie to people to make ourselves look good. We can't hide anything from God. That's what I love about him. That's why it's so good to pause our life so that we can get things straight. So that so that we know for sure, this is really who I am. God, I can't tell anybody else that about me. Thank God. That's why you come into the secret place. It's a secret between him and you. And he's not going to gossip about you. He's not going to tell anybody your business. He's going to go right to the Father who he's sitting right at his right hand. And they're going to talk and pray for us so that we can be healed from all sin, all iniquity, and delivered. He'll show us his saving power, his salvation, when we order our conversation aright, when we order our lives aright. It is up to us to make those decisions, to want to live right, live holy. Yes, holy. Not how you dress, but how you think and how you respond to God. That's what holiness is. And dressing modestly as believers, that's important too. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Mm, Selah. Selah means think on that. Just that quick. We're already in nine minutes. But in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, um, I think it starts at verse 6. Y'all excuse me. My hair is dry today. I want to start at 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't get all bent out of shape when you see in the word a correction from God. Or you hear um, a spiritual leader speaking and bringing correction to the house of God, to the body of Christ. 
And I'm not talking about politics because that's what's going on right now in the world. But spiritual leaders are to lead and guide us and help us with the things of God and maturing in God. That's their responsibility. Don't forget that. If they're not leading you to God and they want to lead you and talk about other things, I have my opinion about that. But our responsibility is to learn about God. That's it. Especially when we go around when we go somewhere where we want to be taught, we're going to learn about God, how he operates, how he thinks. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is whom the father chasteneth? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. I don't want to be called a bastard, not by God. A bastard is illegitimate. You came in some other way besides through the son, through God's son, Jesus. That's what a bastard is. You just decided that you're going to come to God on your terms. Not so. You'll be a bastard to him. It is so clear how you must come to him. And that is through his son, Jesus, confessing with your mouth, believing with your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and asking him to forgive you of your sins and asking him to come in your life and be Lord of your life. That is the only way into God. That's his protocol. I can't change it and neither can you. And so if you come in any other way and he corrects you and you get an attitude about it, you get that attitude because you're not his. Take it. I remember when my mom used to beat us. She would wear our tails out. But she did it, and I'll tell you why she did it. Because she loved us and she understood that if I don't correct you now in, in this thing that you did, that you know was wrong, and I recognize that it was wrong, then if you don't receive that as correction and change your ways, then you'll go out and you'll be corrected by the laws of the land. It's just that simple. And this is what God says about that. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Yeah, it hurts. You get upset about it. But you don't stay upset with God. Are you kidding me? Who in the world would be upset with God Almighty who made us, who put breath in us? Stop. If, you, if that's your attitude about God, you need to repent. And you need to accept the chastening, the correction. And if you don't like correction, then you've got you to gotta start over at base one, your basic walk with God. Because he is going to correct you. He's not going to love on you. Everything is not going to be all good all the time with him. He's got to correct you to make sure that you don't get high-minded and think more of yourself than you ought to. That is a part of being a child of God. Even as adults in God, we still get corrected. Because if not, it'll make us arrogant. And then we'll be rude. I Believe me, I know. And it's ugly. When you get so full of yourself that you start treating other people ugly. I've done that and people have done it to me. It's very humbling. Nevertheless, afterward, it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You're being exercised to receive instruction. That's all chastening is. I'm trying to instruct you in the right way to go. So I am pausing your life and telling you you're not doing what's right. So pause. You pause your life. You pause your life and do right. You pause your life and receive the correction. And I'm going to tell you, the more you read this word, there's there's times of love and comfort and, and encouragement and ways to go. But there's also times where God's going to say, hold up, hold up. Let's stop right here. Because you know what you just did is off. It's wrong. And so that's that's what we're talking about here. That's what God is talking about. I love being with you all. And I hope you enjoy your time with me and God. But this is how me and God roll. I don't know how y'all roll. But I'm trying to help those who don't know the ways and how to get closer to God. That's all this is about. This is not about me. It's about 
him. And every time I want to point you to him, not to me. That's why I come naked and unashamed. Naked meaning no makeup, no earrings. I'm, I don't get all fly. This is my morning routine. And I come to God straight out the gate. I'm coming to him bare. And that's how we all should be. I know some of you watch it later after you're dressed and everything. That That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying go deep within yourself and do right by God and right by yourself so that your life can be good. The people around you and especially your children, if you have children. You want to live holy and pleasing to God. That is all that matters. Because at the end of the day, at the end of your life, out of all the things we work for, we study for, we save for. At the end of the day, do you know when we leave here, all of those things will be left. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Everything that we're striving for, that we work so hard for, that we lose sleep over, it will be left. I think there's a there's a scripture that says that. But when, you know, when truth comes, all of these things, they will be put away. Everything. It, it'll be gone. Everything. It'll be left. And you know what we will have? Our relationship with God. That's it. That's all we will have left. So keep that perspective about yourself. I'm not saying don't pursue greatness. Don't, don't leave your mark in the earth. Don't leave, leave your name in the earth. Beyonce did that song, I Was Here. I lived, I learned, I loved, I was here. I left my mark. It cannot be erased. It cannot be erased from the minds of people who are left. But when you go to heaven, when you leave this life, your goal should be, I want to see Jesus. I want to I want to know what it's like. I want to go with him. I do not want to go to hell. I don't want to live my life in such a way that God is not saying, "Come on. Come on. Come on home." Or I oh my gosh, I dare not want to hear him say, "Get away from me because I didn't know you." And then we brag and say, "But God, I cast out devils in your name. I prophesied in your name." And he says, yes, that's the gift I gave you. But you never came. You never paused your life. You never spent time with me. You never wanted to get to know me. You see, God will give us gifts and we can do great things using those gifts because the gifts of God, he does not take away. He will never take them away from us because it's a gift. But one thing, when we get to the gate and it's time for us to enter in with him, to spend all of eternity with him, his word says, no, get away from me. You use what I gave you, but you never took the time to be with me. You never got to know me. That's a shame. Don't live your life like that. I'm going to read it in the uh, Message Bible because I want us to get this. You can't go any further if you don't understand the ways of God. And this is one of his ways. He chastens those he loves. He corrects those he loves. He spanks those he loves. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe what his word says. I am taking you to his word. Again, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we'd better get on with it. Strip down, start running and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. Home, that exhilarating finish, in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way. Cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there, in the place of honor, right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item. That long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. In this all-out match against sin, others have stuffed 
far worse than you to say nothing of what Jesus went through, all that bloodshed. So don't feel sorry for yourselves. Or have you forgotten how good parents treat children and that God regards you as his children? My dear child, don't shrug off God's discipline, but don't be crushed by it either. It's the child he loves that he disciplines. The child he embraces, he also corrects. God is educating you. That's why you must never drop out. He's treating you as still children. This trouble you're in isn't punishment. It's training. The normal experience of children. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Let me read that one more time. Only irresponsible parents leave children to fend for themselves. Would you prefer an irresponsible God? We respect our own parents for training and not spoiling us. So why not embrace God's training so we can truly live? While we were children, our parents did what seemed best to them. But God is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. At the time, discipline isn't much fun. It always feels like it's going against the grain. Later, of course, it pays off handsomely. For it's the well-trained who find themselves mature in their relationship with God. So don't sit around on your hands. No more dragging your feet. Clear the path for long-distant runners so no one will trip and fall. So no one will step in a hole and sprain an ankle. Help each other out and run for it. Work at getting along with each other and with God. Otherwise, you will never get so much as a glimpse of God. Of God. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. Keep a sharp eye for weeds of bitter discontent. So that's it. I've gone over the time today. Like I said, sometimes you have to stop and come back to finish. But I'm here to help you to win the race that you're in. And if you don't understand the ways of God, and this is one of his ways, then you need to sit even longer in his presence so that he can help you to get everything right. And that's all this is. Pause. Think on these things. God loves you. I love you. And I thank you for taking the time. And I thank God that he loves us so that he stops and chastens us and get us. Get out there, girl. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know I love you. That's what he says every morning. And that's what we're saying to him when we come and spend time with him. God, you know I love you so much. You know I love you. God, I love you so much that I don't want to offend you. I don't want to do things that don't please you. God, I love you. I adore you. I would be nothing without him. And neither will you. And neither would you. We are nothing without him. We are lost without him. BB and CC one and sang that song. If y'all can tell, I love music. I'm lost without you. It's easy to see. That's a song that they sang years ago. But know this, you can do nothing without him, but you can do everything with him. With him. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Be strengthened today. I love you guys. God loves you. You know, when people say, I love you more. No, God loves you more. God loves you more. God loves us more. Have a super day. Let God arise in you. See you next time. God loves you.